Hi, everybody. I'm just going to pick up right where I left off in the previous video with the same notebook and now talk about uh, linear algebra calculations. So uh, you can reopen that notebook or uh, just carry along with where we were. And um, what I'm going to do now is, as I've been doing all along, I'm going to create a markdown cell here. And I'm going to say that these are linear algebra operations. So um, we have a couple of matrix matrices that are um, three by three, for instance, B, just to remind you. And let's think about some linear operation, linear algebra operations we might be interested in. So we might be interested in the determinant. Um, and the determinant, the command for the determinant is np.linalg of B. So it's a function in the uh, NumPy library, and it has this kind of inconvenient name. And the determinant of B turns out to be 69. Um, the, uh, we might be interested in the inversion of a matrix. So that's done by np.linalg.inv of B. Uh, so for instance, if we multiply, if we, if we let, um, let's let C, or maybe D, be np.linalg.inv inv of b. So now we've saved its inverse. And now we can do the matrix product. Remember that just multiplying using star is the term by term product. The matrix product is done with the at sign. So if I do b at d, I compute the matrix product of b with d, but d was supposed to be the inverse of b. And if you look at the answer, you see that on the diagonal, you have ones, but you don't quite get zeros on the off diagonal, you get 1 times 10 to the minus 17th and 3 times 10 to the minus 16th. That's because this is a numerical um, numerical library and it it um, it works in floating point and sometimes it's uh, it's not exactly correct. Uh, so you you can, there's various ways to deal with these numbers which are supposed to be zero but aren't quite such as by rounding. I'm going to leave that discussion for another day. Um, in addition to the matrix product, you can also do the dot product. If you let, for example, A be the array 3, 4, 5, and B be the array 5, 4, 5, 6, um, then the dot product is given by NP dot dot. And we can just check that NP dot dot of A and B is 62. It should be 3 times 4, which is 12 plus 4 times 5, which is 20, so that's 32, plus 5 times 6, which is 30, is 62. So that is, in fact, the dot product of two um, vectors. You can take the dot product of um, matrices, but you have to be a little bit careful. It actually computes the matrix product. So it's not maybe exactly what you would expect. If you do np dot dot, of B, D. Remember, B and D are inverse matrices from earlier. Oops. Oh, I renamed A and B. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, so uh, if we go and we remember that, um, I'll show you a little trick here. We created B up here. We can copy this and use Control C to copy that cell and come down here and put in Control V. And now we have our B back. And if we do NP dot dot B D now, we once again get the identity matrix more or less. So. Um, you would, might think that the dot product of these two matrices is the sum of the products of their entries, and it, it doesn't quite work that way. So um, you can also use dot for matrix multiplication, but um, it's probably safer to use at. OK. Um, the other thing you can do with uh, matrices is you can do row and column operations. So let's look again at our matrix B that we have. Um, remember that B colon comma zero means the first column of B. The row uh, entry is allowed to run over the range and the column entry is fixed at zero. 
if you take b minus 3 times b colon 1, what you're doing here is you're taking the first column of b and subtracting 3 times the second column of b. And so we can check that. It's 1 minus 3 times negative 1 is 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 minus 3 times 5 is um, 2 minus 15, which is minus 13. And minus 5 minus 3 is minus 8. Um, if you want to do a column operation in place, you can say that the zeroth column, I mean, the well, the first column of B is equal to this column operation. And the effect of that is to change the matrix B. You notice here that now B has the new entry in its first column. So that is how you do a column operation. And to do a row operation, for instance, if you want to take the, want to make the first row of B equal to the first row of B minus five times the last row of B, now B has a new first row given by what used to be its first row minus five times its last row. So um, it is possible to do row and column operations in place. The one warning about that is it can be hard to go backwards, right? We've lost B, we messed it up. And then just to um, finish up this discussion of um, linear algebra operations, there are some special arrays that are useful to know about. Oop, not areas. So I double click in that box and change areas to arrays. So you might want an array of zeros. And you can make an array of zeros of any shape that you want. So uh, and so here's a two by two zero matrix. You might want an array of ones. So here's a three by three matrix of ones. Um, you might want a, a, a vector of ones just to, and now we have five ones in a row. Um, you might want a diagonal matrix. And to do that, you give the diagonal elements on a um, in a list. And so here we have a four by four matrix with the diagonal elements equal to two, three, four, and five. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, then uh, there are two others that are really useful to know about. One is you can make a range. So if you do a range, notice that it's np.a range, you can give a starting point, an ending point, and a step size. And what you will get is an array which counts from 0 to 10 by 0.2. But following the usual convention in Python, the first index is included and the last one is not. So you notice that the array stops at 9.8, uh, not 10. And if you ask for the shape of this, you see there's 50 entries, and that's um, what you would expect because if you, if you step by 0.2 from uh, 0 to 10, you would want to get 50 entries. And a slightly different version of this is the linspace array, and it works slightly differently. Instead of, you give again a starting point and an ending point, but instead of giving a step size, <clears throat> you say how many steps you want. So if I ask for 50 steps, then it's going to take, it's going to go from 0 to 10, and it's going to arrange to have 50 steps. But the difference is that in linspace, the beginning and ending point are included. So the step size here is a little bit off from 0.2. Uh, if I did x equals np dot linspace 0, 9.8, 50, and then looked at x, then I get the same thing that I would have done gotten with a range. So these are useful for plotting. And for example, if I do define n to be the lin space from 0 to 10 with, let's say, 50 intervals, and I take x squared, 
So the way you do an exponent is with two asterisks. Then these would be the y values corresponding to the x values in x. So I could let y equals x squared. And if I look at y and I look at x, um, the, we have corresponding y values for each x. And we could have done sine of x or um, even um, uh, log of x, although we're going to get a numerical error because we have a zero there. And you notice that you get a warning because the first entry in x is zero, and it tried to take the log of zero, and it puts in negative infinity. So it does go on, but it does warn you that it found a divide by zero. So these are the um, kind of basic linear algebra operations that um, you can do in, uh, in NumPy and Python and the Jupyter Notebook.